All right, let us also welcome back former CIA spokesperson, co-author of the text, How Aggressive CIA Actions After 9-11 Saved American Lives, Bill Harlow joins us again. Bill, I have done a tremendous amount of research here in the last couple of days. And if you go on Google and you talk about torture and it being effective, it comes up with absolutely hundreds of entries. Former CIA officials, former professional interviewers, if you will, who say that torture does not work and Americans need to know. Now, I know there's enhanced interrogation tactics here that we're talking about, but how do we then reconcile the fact that everybody who's been here says it doesn't work and we shouldn't have done this in the first place? We were badly prepared and we did it all wrong. Well, maybe that proves that this wasn't torture because I know for a fact that these interrogation techniques worked. Uh, there are a lot of myths out there, a lot of misunderstandings about what went on. Uh, you know, we had these, these terrorists in our custody for three, four years at a stretch. For a few days or a few weeks early in their tenure, some of the worst of the worst were subjected to enhanced interrogation techniques. At the end of that period, they became cooperative. And for the next two, three, four years on, they provided a wealth of information, information which we could check, validate, make sure it was true. So when people say, well, they'll say anything to get you get the pain to stop, th there wasn't pain going on. They were providing information which resulted in thousands and thousands of intelligence reports. Just look at the 9-11 Commission uh, report, you know, and, and many, uh, about 40 percent of the footnotes in that come from information which came from the detainees. It clearly was valid information, useful, which helped us dismantle al-Qaeda. Uh, so, Bill... We take a look at what happens in Washington. In the last segment, we focused on the Senate. But what about uh, the actions of our commander in chief? Is he trying to have this both ways? On one hand, he's got Brennan and Sconce there at the CIA. Apparently, he's going to stay. But on the other hand, he seemed to champion release of that Democrat report from the U.S. Senate. Well, it, it's hard to understand exactly what's, what's going on. There's, there's pressure to be open and transparent, at least uh, open and transparent on things that happened in the last administration. On things that happened in this administration, eh, not so much. You know, but, but it is what it is. Washington, as you very well know, is, is a unique uh, town, and, and we have to deal with the realities here. All we can do is try to push back to the extent we can to be, make sure that people have an opportunity to read the, the other versions of it, like the Senate Minority Report, which paints an entirely different picture than the document which just came out. Bill, do you and others in want to look the American public in the eye, Dianne Feinstein and others, and say, let me tell you something, sometimes you have to go to the wall. And let's stop being, maybe this is what needs to be said, be honest, stop being so squeamish because we were attacked, 3,000 people were killed, we have to go after them. This is what happens when you're at war. Is that what needs to be said to sort of bring this down to some sort of a, a, a logical discourse? Well, they weren't so squeamish back in 2002, 2003. And you say, should we look them in the eye and say that? That brings back the point that the committee never met with any of the people who were involved with the program, running the program, responsible for it. They didn't want to hear the truth. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to cherry pick from some documents to make the point that they wanted to make now, 10 years, 11 years after the fact. But do Americans and need to be told that, Bill? Do Americans themselves, the ones who are questioning this, do they need to be told, you're safe today, part and parcel because of the fact that we have to make hard decisions, this is war, stop being squeamish. Well, yes, but they do need to hear that. And there are lengths that we should not go to. There are things we should not do. But people should be honest. They need to say, you know, I am willing to accept the risk beyond this point. I do not want my government to do this beyond here. And I am willing to accept the risks that may come to us if we don't. We did that at the time, though. We talked, we got permission from the White House from the Department of Justice, and we briefed Congress, and they did not object. We did what was necessary, and we we're confident we saved American lives. Bill, a minute remains. I'm interested in your assessment of Dianne Feinstein. She would win plaudits for being bipartisan, for being willing to take necessary steps, and then she shows up on the Senate floor with what uh, apparently is just a politically motivated document. What kind of person is she? I, I, I don't want to personalize this. I, you know, she's been a responsible uh, leader and, and a supporter of the, of the intelligence community through much of her career. I can't explain exactly the motivation for, for why this report is so unbalanced, so badly done. I can only assume that her staff 
uh, had a large uh, bit to do with it, and that that they just got wrapped up and they they believed their own narrative, and they didn't want the the facts and the truth to get in the way. All right, Bill. We want to once again point out that the book that you co-authored is called Hard Measures: How Aggressive CIA Actions After 9/11 Saved American Lives. The website is CIAsavedLives.com. Bill, thanks so much for joining us. To you and your family, a very happy holiday season. Same to you. All right, now stay with us because JD, when we come back, we are going to talk further about just what has been transpiring in Washington, D.C., the implications for the world. And again, we've combined forces, Midpoint and America's Forum, in this special presentation here on Newsmax TV.